on the line with us is Mayor Pete Buttigieg, uh, the mayor of South Bend, Indiana. He is an Afghanistan veteran, the youngest mayor of a city with over 100,000 residents. He was 29 years old when elected, an openly, openly gay man, and an advocate for the Hillary Clinton campaign, HillaryClinton.com. Um, mayor, am I, am I mispronouncing your last name? I'm sorry, it's the first time I've, I've spoken it. You know, it, uh, people say it every which way, so around here they just call me Mayor Pete, but uh, you, you got it just about right. Buttigieg is, uh, is the name. Great. Um, so, uh, Mike Pence, bad for Indiana. Uh, he was, he's your governor. And, 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 and let me just put this in, in a, what I think is perhaps a more important context, which was my main rant for this hour, which is the New York Times is reporting that when, the, when Don Trump Jr. approached John Kasich asking him if he would be VP, uh, the sales pitch was, how'd you like to be the most powerful vice president in history? And the uh, spokesperson for, for Kasich said, what do you mean? And he said, well, you know, Donald Trump is not interested in actually running the government. He wants to be kind of the head of state, not the head of government. And so uh, he'll be like the board, of, you know, the chairman of the board, but you'll actually run the country. You'll, you'll be in charge of all domestic and foreign policy. Um, so if we were to put Mike Pence in charge of all domestic and foreign policy, assuming the same offer was made to Mike Pence, and I'm guessing yeah. it probably was, what does that mean to us? Yeah, I think you're exactly right. You know, he is now the most experienced politician and maybe the only experienced politician in the inner, inner circle. So there's a good chance he would be extremely influential. And that is not good news for the U.S. Uh, it was not good news for Indiana. You know, to, to understand Mike Pence, I think you got to look at the, the people who know him best, which is those of us here in the state of Indiana who've uh, uh, tried to pick up the pieces from some of the damage he's done to the reputation of our state. Uh, you know, he uh, – we say – you know, as a mayor, you, you always reach across the aisle. Uh, he's always been a nice guy. But in terms of the actual decision, decisions that have been made, uh, he very quickly lost the respect of the business community, lost the respect of a lot of Republicans. And even in a bright red state like Indiana, uh, a lot of people don't realize that he was in the fight of his life and probably would not have been reelected if uh, Donald Trump hadn't given him uh, a new assignment. Right. So this was Donald Trump basically threw Mike Pence a, a, a life raft. A Absolutely. Life, uh, and that's the only way to explain why somebody like Mike Pence would sign up for this in the first place. You know, uh, uh, he's uh, criticized a lot of Trump's positions. I mean, uh, some of uh, uh, his uh, most respectable moments were moments like when he uh, uh, said forthrightly that it was unconstitutional uh, what, what Trump was saying should be uh, done to people based on a religious test. Uh, obviously, uh, that's gone out the window. And, and part of how you explain that is that politically, he, he really didn't have anywhere else to go. Yeah. Now, there's a bunch of areas where Trump has been outside the Republican mainstream. And I, I per personally am of the opinion that this is how he got the nomination, that a lot of independents and frankly, a lot of Republicans voted for him because he was taking positions that were completely inconsistent with the, the historic Republican Party positions. He says he's anti-TPP, anti-trade deals. He said in one of the debates that his taxes should go up, the, that the guys on Wall Street are, are, are uh, getting away with murder was the phrase he used, uh, that their taxes should be raised. Uh, he said that he wants to protect Social Security. We're not going to go after Social Security all, at all. And he, of course, went after the Iraq war. Um, Mike Pence is on the exact opposite side of all four of those issues that uh, I think those are the principal issues that most people who voted for Trump thought they were voting for. I think that's right. This is a strange, strange marriage. I mean, you could not have picked a more ideological conservative uh, than Mike Pence and uh, ideological about uh, many of the issues where, where the country has actually moved on. Uh, you know, his, his signature issues have, have had to do mostly with the social issues that uh, a lot of us thought in 2016 we were beginning to put behind us. And it's very strange to see somebody with no ideology at all, like Donald Trump, yeah. uh, getting uh, uh, getting into this arrangement with somebody like Mike Pence, who has always put ideology first. Yeah. And, and not just ideology, in some cases, really vicious ideology. I mean, you know, Donald Trump, to his credit, said, you know, he doesn't, you know, trans people can use any bathroom they want in Trump Towers. Um, Mike Pence, I suspect not so much. Well, and I, I hate to say it, but this may be the one area where they really do have something in common, which is specializing in singling out vulnerable groups. Uh, you know, the, the so-called Religious Freedom Act that uh, uh, cost uh, Mike Pence the, the respect of a lot of uh, moderates in this state. Uh, there's no question that that was uh, designed to target uh, the GLBT community. Uh, and uh, he's uh, resisted at every turn uh, anything along the lines of equality. Uh, so, uh, you know, I've been scratching my head thinking of what these two people have in common, and I hate to say it, but 
uh, the, the one thing that it seems like they do uh, is picking on people who are vulnerable in our society. In other words, they know how to scapegoat. Oh, yeah, and it's awful. Uh, you know, uh, it uh, really tore our state apart. Uh, they went back, and uh, the legislature basically told the governor to uh, go wait in the corner while they figured it out, and they, they, they put in a so-called fix. But the state is still dealing with this. I mean, we had businesses. We had very Republican businesses. Uh, the NCAA expressed concern. NASCAR, you know you're in trouble uh, when you're a conservative, and, and NASCAR is saying we're not comfortable with what you're doing, and, and we're worried about what it's doing uh, right. to the reputation of this area, and we're not sure we want to do business. In, in wow. I mean, as a mayor, you know, uh, I've got a very non-ideological job, but my job is to, to make sure that we're open for business. And we had people – Calling right and left, we had shows and concerts that were thinking about canceling. Uh, we had, uh, uh, you know, a museum donor who said, you know, I love your city, but I and I love your museum, but I just can't give to anything in Indiana right now because it, it feels like an attack. And that's uh, not something that that uh, cities uh, like our cities that I'm trying to bring back economically. It's not something we can afford, and it's definitely not something that our country can afford at, at the very moment when when we seem to be on the verge of putting a lot of these divisive social issues behind us. Yeah. I'm waiting for, well, I was going to say, I'm waiting for the misogyny to begin, given that Hillary Clinton's at the top of the ticket. I you think it's already, long. Uh, yeah, I think in a way it already started last night in a really vicious way, although uh, they were successful in avoiding the, 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 the real loud dog whistle uh, misogynistic comments, but they're coming. Don't you think? Yeah, I think you're right. They're not even going for the dog whistle. It's just a regular whistle now, and yeah. uh, and and it's drill. And I've never seen such a negative uh, convention. I mean, it's natural to to poke holes in in the opposition and, and what they stand for. But uh, uh, this is I've never seen this kind of negativity. And I got to wonder. Mike Pence is somebody who uh, you know said that he was done with negative campaigning forever. Uh, I, I just wonder how he can keep a straight face. And it'll be very interesting to see uh, how he tries to reconcile that when he takes the stage. This there you go. Mayor, Mayor Pete, uh, please, would you please say it, sir? Yeah, Buttigieg. But Buttigieg, you thank you. Mayor, Mayor Pete Buttigieg, the mayor of Saint, uh, South Bend, uh, Indiana, a Democrat. Uh, mayor, thank you so much for being with us today. Great cool. to be with you. Thank you. Good talking. We'll be back. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy-dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.